today we're going to be looking at floating point representation of decimal numbers and um, now before you look at this it's important you know how to do the twos complement converting to binary otherwise um, this this won't make sense at a certain point so before we get to converting decimal numbers we're going to look at scientific notation and standard form um, and versus normalized form and what the difference between them is. This isn't actually part of the course and um, just I think it just helps to know um, just because they teach it slightly different in maths and slightly different in computing. I Before I came to the current school I was in the maths department and they told me I was doing it wrong and I I taught the pupils the, the maths way and then kind of applied it to binary after that but there's actually a like it's done slightly different in computing so I've got some examples here so if you were to get this question in maths or something like it put the following number into standard form what you would do is you would do, put a 4 there and then you get this decimal point and you put it right after the first digit and then you put everything else after it and then you do times 10 and you count how many places you moved the decimal point so you moved it up three places and that's it um, now if you were to get the exact same question but it's a normalized form so this is from a computing context and um, what you've got to do is you put a zero at the start I think it's actually easier because you can just remember to do that you put a zero at the start and then go four, four, five, six, two, two. Oh God. <laughs> and then you times 10 and you've bumped up one extra place, the dot, the decimal point. So it's times 10 to the power of four. And that's it. So that's what we're going to be doing um, as we move forward. So bear that in mind. Um, there's going to be a zero in the front. So here is what it looks like in the higher exam. So convert this number to floating point representation. There are 16 bits for the mantissa and 8 bits for the exponent. Now there's quite a few steps to go through. Um, maybe I should actually get the Word document up first. So the first step... Is this it? Of course not. <laughs> oh no, I was, sorry. Right. The first step is that you put a zero in front of the number, just like with normalized form. But you're not doing it by times 10, you're doing it by times two, because we're working in binary. And then you count how many places you moved the point. From there, because you've got a four, four isn't a binary number, notice how the rest of it's in binary. You need to convert the four into binary as well. And then you've got to look at your mantissa and your exponent. So if it says um, a 16-bit mantissa, you need to make sure that bit is 16 digits long. And if it's, uh, where is it? So it was only 12 digits to begin with, so you needed to add an extra four. So this wasn't enough um, before the times two, this wasn't enough, so you had to add an extra four zeros. Um, and then you need to make sure you're four. You can't just do a four digit number. Well, it's already eight digits, so that, that's fine like that. Um, probably better just to show us off with examples. So I will get this. And first thing you've got to do is put a zero at the start, right? And then you do one, one, zero, one, one, zero, one, zero. Now, what we've done is we've moved the decimal point four places. So we're going to go times two and it's times two to the power of four. Now, I like to draw an arrow just to keep myself right and like keep it separate. Um, and you need to do, turn this number into binary. So if you want, I mean, it's quite a small number, so you can do, I'll do for this example. You can do your little headings. Most of them are going to obviously be unneeded just so you know where this number is coming from. I mean, what's it going to be? Let's be honest. It's, so it's just a one and a four and nothing else. Usually they're quite small numbers. Then you've got to take this and count it. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So the first bit said there are 16 bits for the mantissa. So the mantissa is this first number. We need to make it 16 bits long. So to do that, you actually just write 
I'll write it out again. You just need to write zeros until you get up to 16. So if we've got nine so far, it means you have to do seven zeros. And then you do times two, and you have this binary number here. Now, and that's your answer. Now, you probably think when you're writing this out, it just looks wrong. Like if you did that in an exam, if you did that many zeros in a maths exam, it would be wrong, but that actually is what they want. Now, you don't get all the marks for that, just that, that's like the working bit. You'll get given a little grid like this you need to fill out. And the sign bit is whether it's a positive or negative number. And all you've got to do is take the first zero and put the zero there. Then, and this is the bit people mess up all the time, you just do the next 15 digits. You don't do the zero again. Um, so many people, um, I think that's right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Yeah. Because um, we're, we're sticking to a 16-bit mantissa, so many people add an extra zero here and then keep the zero here. And before you'd get the mark for this bit, you would lose a mark for this bit. So the 16-bit mantissa, the first bit is the sign bit, then the next 15 digits. Um, also, if there's anything, if this is, if you completely blank out on the day, if there's anything you're going to take away from this video, just put a zero in the sign box. It's going to be zero. It's never going to be one in the exam. It's going to be zero. So if you are take a complete panic attack, just write zero. I mean, it'd be great that you remember the rest and we can get the other marks here, but just write zero no matter what in the sign box and you'll get at least one mark. And then the exponent here, well, you just chuck it in. Um, wait, is that right? Um, yeah, but I did too many zeros there. That's a problem, right? And that's meant to be a zero, not a six. Right, so that's how it works. Um, I've got another example. I realize, I, I know this video might be a bit long, but this is quite complicated, so I want to take my time with this. Also, there is a slightly different version of this, which I'll get to in a minute, but I just want to kind of do two of each version. So, the right, let's do what we did before. We put a zero in front. One, 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 zero, zero, one, one, zero, zero, one, one, one. We moved the decimal point, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven places. So times 10 to the power of seven. Right, so let's do that quickly. Um, this would just be zero, 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 and then it's eight, so zero there. Four, two, one. All that adds up to seven. That's your binary number for seven. Here, um, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 10, 11, 12, 13. You don't have to add that many zeros with this one. So you would just do. three zeros and that's us up to 16. Again, and then if you wanted to, yeah, I will do it. You do times two and then you write the number that we had up here. Right, that's the answer. So again, putting it in the box, the f like what a shock, it's zero. It's always gonna be zero. And then you do the next 15 digits. And I don't know if you missed this out. Would they give you the mark? I don't know. Just put it in the box to be sure. I mean, they're checking that you know the difference between the sign and mantissa. So, and then the exponent is zero, 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 one, one, one. Right. Slightly different example this time. Um, this one starts off with a bunch of zeros at the decimal point. Now. Normalized form, it wants a one to be right after the decimal point. So, although we've already got the zero, now we need to move these ones closer. Um, so to do that, you do zero, and you get rid of these four zeros, and just do one, one, zero, times 10. And now you're counting how many you got rid of. So we got rid of four, so we write negative four. Now, 
the, what you do with the negative four of is you need to work out the same way we did with two's complement um, negative binary numbers. So we get regular four. Um, and then after that, you flip the bits. This isn't worth any extra marks, by the way. It's just, it's still worth the same one mark for this. And then you add one. And then you do your one plus one is zero, carry the one. One plus one is zero, carry the one. Or if you like, I prefer, you just say, right, well, the one plugs in there, the rest are zeros, and the rest of the number remains the same. Um, for this bit, there are 16 bits, we need to make it 16 digits. So we've got 0, 1, 1, 0, that's 5. Then you have to write 11 zeros. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 times 2. And that kind of joins up, we'll consider that joined up. Um, and there's your answer. Um, again, the sign, what a shock, it's 0. And then just the 15 digits there. So one, one, one. I'm, I'm losing my mind now, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve. And then the exponent is just that bit there. Those are not meant to be L's, my apology. I don't know what happened. Right. One, this is the last one, slightly different. Um, there are 12 bits for the mantissa and 12 bits for the exponent. Now, I haven't seen this um, come up yet, but then there's only been one exam and one specimen paper, but it could come up uh, the way the question's worded. So we're going to be prepared for it. So, as before, um, and this isn't just for this type of question, um, it could be 12 bits here and 12 bits there or 8 bits there and 16 bits for these ones. I think it's unlikely but it could happen. So 0 point and we get, get rid of the zeros so there is 6 of them. So 1, 0 times 10 to the negative 6. And we need to get 6 in or negative six in two's complement. Now remember, it's 12 bits for the exponent. So we need to go 12 digits. Um, again, not meant to be an L, I don't know what's happening. So this would be 128, this is 256, 512, 1024, 2048. Not like it matters, but that's what those numbers represent. And then you negate it. <sighs> uh, what am I doing? Oh God, this, this is awful. Um, zero, zero, one. And then you add one as before. So one plus one is zero, carry the one. And then you get one there and the rest remains the same. For this side, we get zero, one, zero. And now we've only got 12 bits to fill, so you don't have to do quite as many zeros. So we've got eight more zeros to do. Times two to this. And there's your answer. Again, zero for the sign. If there's one thing you take away, please just put a zero on the sign. And um, when it comes to prelim time, and uh, you're not putting a zero on the sign, what are you doing with your life? Um, then just fill in this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Adds up to twelve, all this, that's fine. And then you fill in this bit here. Again, I, I don't know what's happening. So. Right, and that is how to turn a binary number with a decimal point into uh, to give it a floating point representation. It is a bit tricky, I'm not gonna lie. It took me a while to get my head around it when they introduced it into the higher course. Um, practice will make perfect with this, right? Bye.